Hey guys, so welcome to Daytona 24 and welcome to the BMW setup here. And I'm here with Tom Plusinski from BMW of North America. You've seen him before. He's the expert when it comes to racing cars. And we have a brand new one today. A so brand new one. Maybe let's start with the name, Tom. What's okay. the name of this new car? All right, the name of the new car is the BMW M Hybrid V8. Okay. And it's a GTP class car. Okay. For IMSA. What's the LMDH yes. kind of thing? A lot of people have been calling these LMDH cars. Okay. And they are LMDH. So the LMDH is, is, the, is the rule set that these cars are built to. Sure. Um, and, and it's like a GT3 as an example. Okay. So GT3 is, is built to a set of rules and then you can race in various series around the world in the GTD class. In the GT3 classes, here we call it a GTD, right? Okay. So here, this is called a GTP class, but it is built on an LMDH rule set. All right, understood. Very complicated. <laughs> a little bit. So how does it tie into the history of BMW Motorsport? This well, particular this, one. This particular one, it, it does. It ties into it because generation, generationally, we have we have had a few GTPs. We were actually the first manufacturer to make a GTP for this series here um, back in 1981. It was called the M1C. Okay. It was a March chassis with a BMW M1 engine. We came back to GTP in uh, 1986 with the BMW GTP, very yep. simple name, and now we're we're here again uh, with the with the M Hybrid uh, V8. So this so, is quite unique, right? I mean, it's quite first unique. hybrid electrified yep. Yep. BMW car, basically. There's a reason why we did this now. Okay. Um, the LMDH rule set is, is a power hybrid setup, and it shows electrification for performance cars. Okay. And as we have heard, BMW M will electrify the range over time. The, uh, the BMW XM is one of the first of those, right? It's a, it's a V8 power with a, with a plug-in hybrid. Sure. This is a very similar concept, and it's a good way to get our fans, our M customers, to, to think about the future. Gotcha. And, uh, and besides that, it looks really good. It looks good. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so should we get closer to the car and kind of tell yes. us about the tech? Because I think that's the most interesting You've talked part. about design with Michael exactly. Scully, so I don't need to touch any nope. of that. But maybe yeah, let's move right. into the okay, garage sounds here. sounds good. I'll follow you there. And feel free to point out anything that's interesting and cool. Sure, we'll, we'll start right here at the front, I think. And actually, if we can move the camera underneath, you'll see the downforce generating underfloor of this. So part of the L LMDH rule set is that you have to choose one of four chassis. Ours is a Dallara. Okay. Uh, the other manufacturers can use theirs. It just so happens that Cadillac uses a Dallara, Dallara. chassis as well. Now that doesn't mean that the Cadillac is the same as ours with different livery, but far from it. Okay. So the underfloor is fixed. That is Dallara. Okay. Um, but suspension, engine, uh, the upper body work is all BMW specific. So we have the ability to customize that basic Dallara tub sure. to our needs. Okay. And you've seen from the body work that it is very uniquely BMW. Yeah. And conversely, our competitor right next door here has a very different, has their their design on theirs. We it won't look at it, yeah. but yeah. yeah. But it looks yeah. different, yeah. yeah. It looks different, yeah. Uh, but let's look, I mean, it is a really beautiful piece of kit. So here in the front, you see uh, the transverse, transverse spring and shock assembly, cooling for the brakes. There's even a tether here for, uh, to retain the wheel if, if a wheel gets torn off in a collision. Beautifully made, a really nice setup. Driver is almost centered in the car, and, uh, and yeah. how is the drivetrain set up? So what's the? So yeah, we'll, we'll go around we'll to, to the back, back yeah, and talk back. about that. And just want to point out the the ceramic brakes. The ceramic brakes. Yeah. On the GT class, we're not allowed ceramic brakes, but here we have okay. full up interesting ceramics. Okay. So let's move around, stay out of the way of the mechanics here, and, and we can have a look in the inside. All set up for one guy. Um, the latest Cosworth type wheel and uh, okay. all the electronics. The rear view mirror is actually electronic as well. Okay. Unfortunately, it's shut off right now, so we don't see that on. But a, a very nice compact uh, compartment for the driver. Yeah, it's Interestingly, super tight. The, it, it looks really tight. Yeah, they seem to have a lot of room inside when, when they're in there. The, their feet are elevated. It's, it's almost like a formula car when gotcha. in driving so position. When they swap, yep. do they adjust anything? They can adjust the foot pedals. Okay, so the so foot pedals like won't be some enough. of our GT cars have been in the past, the seat is fixed okay. and the foot pedals are adjustable. There's a little lever that they can pull and move the pedals forward or back at, as they need to. 
Okay. All right. So um, now moving back here. That shows that. Okay, so engine-wise, let's just come to the side here. You can't really see much about the engine. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it is buried in there quite far down, but it is a, a four-liter V8, flat plane okay. crank. It's called the P66-3. Okay. It is based off of the P66 that was used in DTM in, in 2017 and 18. Um, very, very good power plant. And for use here, it was converted from a sprint car engine to a long distance endurance racing engine. So it's been strengthened in some ways. Sure. Two turbos have been added. So it's now twin, uh, twin power turbo. Yeah. And then it's attached to, uh, to a common transmission. And within that transmission is the hybrid drive unit. Okay. So as far as the electrification part of it, are there any rules in the class that you have to run electric at some point or like no. So how, how does uh, it's it work? quite open. So okay. the the way it's set up, so it has a has a, a motor unit in the bell housing. Okay. There is a battery pack under the passenger side sure. roughly. And we can use that energy whenever we want. So the energy is generated and stored by uh, regenerative braking. The brake, okay. And we can use that energy when we want. You'll see in the race tomorrow that we use the electric motor to, uh, to exit the pits. Okay. Benefit of that is instant torque right away. And we don't need to go very fast, so it doesn't run out of steam. Gotcha. We're the rules for the power output of the of the car are very strict. It's 500 kilowatts maximum, nice. okay. and you can achieve that 500 kilowatts however you like. So it can either be full ice mode, yeah. and the, and this power plant is rated to to 500 kilowatts, or it can be a combination of uh, of the ice motor plus the hybrid. And the hybrid is allowed to be 30 kilowatts max. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it can be, so if you put them together, 500 max, okay? And, and that is monitored by these sensors right here. These are torque sensors on the, on the half shafts, okay. or quarter shafts, I, I think they call them on this one. And IMSA and the team knows exactly how much output there is at any one time. Gotcha. So a couple of the key figures on the car, the weight, the minimum weight, is 1,030 kilograms, okay. so about 2,200 pounds, 2,300 right. pounds. Again, the horsepower of the motor is 500 kilowatts, and a hybrid system, 30 kilowatts max. Um, it's made it to a X-Track six-speed trans. Okay. And um, let's see, what else should I tell you about that? It, again, oh yes, let's go. Let's talk about the uh, torque sensors for a second. Rather than deciding on when to pit based on how much fuel we've used, our pit uh, dynamics are based on how much energy we've consumed. Okay. This is true for all the competitors. Okay. So IMSA and the team are measuring how many megajoules we've used by using those sensors. Interesting. And your maximum allowable is, it doesn't mean anything to anyone, yeah. but it's 920 kil megajoules. megajoules yeah. And then you're allowed to uh, your, your, your pit time is based on how many joules you've used. Okay. And you can, so for every 23 joules, you have to be in the pit for, for one second. Yep. So if you're completely using 920, your pit stop is gonna be 40 seconds, gotcha. regardless of how long it takes you to fill the fuel tank. Okay. So that is how it's a little different, yeah. and it's only been made possible by having those, those types of sensors, which are brand new. Gotcha. I know it's a silly uh, question, but top speed on these cars, Top speed here, I think, is about 190 or so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Understood. and that's that's regulated by the by the series. Yeah, Th this is a BOP series, by okay. the way. Uh, but at and this weekend, there is no BOP, BOP adjustments for anyone. No, we're all okay. at the same weight. Sure. We're all at the same horsepower, and um, yeah, and we'll see going down the road how much BOP they actually have to do. So tell me, what's what's in store for the future when it comes to this car racing? Is it going to different races this year? Yes, of course. It's going. To, uh, we'll run a two-car team in IMSA the whole season. Okay. Um, here we have a few more drivers, but the core drivers will be will run the cars for the season. Uh, next year we will go to Le Mans. Okay. <coughs> with a different set of cars. Okay. And uh, 
and there might be some other things in store. Right. Who knows? So we might see them like Sebring and places like that. Oh, definitely, they'll yeah, be in Sebring. Sebring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, Tom. Well, thank you so much. I guess the next step will be to talk to one of the drivers to kind of tell us what it what feels like to like? drive. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's going to be unique compared to the GT class and absolutely. DTM and all of that. Yes. Yeah. So I I'm think actually kind Connor of Connor would love to tell you. about Yeah. It. So that's be uh, our our next stop talking to Connor. So, uh, Tom, thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. This was the BMW M Hybrid V8. <laughs> It's a and, bit of a uh, tongue twister. But. It is a little bit. It's going live with Daytona 24 hours tomorrow, so stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching.